Welcome friends again. Today we're going to make a form that is going to send emails without any backend, just the client side. So here, let me write here name, let's say John Doe, then John Smith, email to, I'm going to write my email like this and here the message will be hello bro and here I will click send. So let me see, and you see here we have a message, so it has been sent, but let me check my email. So as you see here, we have received the email. So I wait to you guys in VS Code. See you. Welcome again, friends. Let's initialize our React application with MPX create React app and let's put a dot here for our current directory. Okay, so the first step is done. For sending emails without any server, we're going to use here the emailgs.com. This is a software that is going to enable us to send only from the client emails and it is super easy. So the first step of course is to create an account. Here if you if you don't have an account, just click on sign up free. But of course I have an account, so I will log in here. Clicking on sign in and here I will enter my credentials. Okay, so I'm here on the front page and the first part that we should do is here add new service. So here, click on it and the service that I'm going to use in my case is Gmail and probably you're going to use Gmail too because it's the most popular I think from them all. So click here and here connect account. So here connect account and you see here I have two Gmail accounts. I will click on the second one and it will connect my Gmail here continue. And here create service so loading come on okay we are ready with the first part the second part after the email service is to make an email template and I have one email template and the only thing that I have changed is this thing here so to user oops what they did so here this thing here this is the only thing that I have touched here so this is just a default from email.js so as you see here and here I can click on save and you see, we have a template ID, a service ID, and the third thing that we need for sending emails is here the public key. So, right now, to send uh, email, first we need to make a form. So here, okay, so let's click here into the source. I have deleted the boilerplate file, so we have just the files that we need here. So, for the app.js here, let me start typing the code. So here, for the JSX, we are going to have here that div. And I'm going to apply a class name of container here. Then inside, I'm going to have a form here. And inside the form, I'm going to have input boxes. And inside those input boxes, we're going to see what we're going to have. So here, input box, and I'm going to multiply them by four. So I have four. But I don't, but this syntax doesn't work for some reason here. So I'm going to make them just like this. Come on, why is that, and why it's not working? Ah. Uh, so because here it's a .js file, that's why I, I cannot do it. So here if I make it JSX, I'm going to be able to do it. Okay, so as you see right now, I did that. Okay, so here for each input box, let me make a label here. Here a label. And after the label here, we're going to have an input. So I can just copy this and paste it here. Nice. And here first, the first label is here name. Then this one is two. After this, we have an email. And here, if this is an email, the type should be email as well here. And here, it is a message. And here, instead of an input, I'm just going to make it as a text area. And the text area will have a name of message here. So, oops, name of message. Here, we should, not we should, but we must provide actually a name attribute here as you see. So here, I'm going to select them with alt and then I click them. Oops, what I did, so here again alt and here name is equal to. So before writing this name, let me go here back to the email template. And as you see here, we have from underscore name, just message to underscore name and user underscore email. So those things we must replicate them one, uh, one, to, one to one. So you see here from name, here I'm going to paste this one. Here too, it should be two names, so they must be exactly the same. Here I'm pasting it like this, you see, then email, this is the email that we want to send the message to. So here it's an email, so let me paste it here, user email, 
And here for the message, it's already named message, so I don't need to touch anything else. Nice. Here for the form, in order to work, we should have here a ref. So here a ref form, and you know how we make a ref here. So here const form is equal to use a ref hook. It's it's probably one of the most popular hooks you have probably encountered it. It is for short for reference. So here ref is for reference. Nice. Then we need to make an on submit function here. So here on submit will be handle. Come on, handle create email or it should be more accurate to handle sent email actually so handle sent email then handle sent email is equal to async it's taking the event as a parameter and as you know when you submit a form the page is refreshed by default so in order to prevent this just write event prevent default like this here and in order to see what we're doing of course we need to start our front end application so here just write npm run start and it will start our application so while we're starting here let me start typing here the code. Oops, okay, so it started. So the dependency that we need to install here, so will be npmi at email js slash browser. This is the dependency that we're going to use. This is the only dependency that we need in this application, only one dependency. So click enter and it will be installed in probably five seconds. So I'm going to close it and start typing the code. So import email js from at email js slash browser and here email js dot send form and here the first parameter so i'm going to write it like this so we have four parameters first parameter is service id the second parameter is template id third is the form dot current so this is sending the form data basically and just let me make some space here and then, oops, the last here is the public key. So I will want to write the comment so we don't forget what we are going to do. So let me get the service ID. Class is not defined here. Wait, ah, here because I'm using CSS modules. Okay, in order to use CSS modules, as you, if you watch my videos, you, we, can, we just do this. And then here we change it to dot module. So it is basically it. So right now, Class is not defined, yes, because here it should be import classes from. And right now it is working. So if I refresh the page, it is working. Nice. We're going to start with just a little bit. So I want uh, to get the data here. So service ID, template ID, form.current, and public key. Nice. So let me go here and here. Okay, so let me copy here this service ID. Okay, I can just op open the model and copy it. So here is the service ID. Then the second parameter is the template ID. So let me com comment, copy, not comment, but copy the template ID. So again, I paste it like this. Then the third parameter is form.current. And the last parameter here is the public key, which we get from the account here. And this is the public key. So copy and here paste. This is it. And here I'm going to provide a dot then. So here result. And I'm just going to console log the result. So console log result dot text. And here, if you have an error, I'm of course going to catch the error. So here, error, and here comes a walk, error.txt. And here, uh, the next part that I want to do is to write the CSS. It's not a lot of CSS, so let's start. So here, asterisk will be box sizing border box, then margin zero, padding zero, font family will be sans serif. And lastly, here for the asterisk will be background color 17176E. Then dot container will be height 100VH with 100VW, display of flex, justify content of center, and align items of center. So I can even split the screen for you to see what I'm styling, so you know what we are doing. Then we are going to target the form directly like this because we have only one form. Height will be 50%, width will be 25%. Border will be one pixel solid EF, EF, EF. Then display of flex, flex direction of column, align items of center, justify content of center, gap of 1.25 ARM, border radius of 20 pixel, and panic of 1.25 on top and bottom, and 2.5 on left and right. So we have still yet to style some things, but let me see right now where we are at. So here, of course, we need to do some things bonus. Uh, so let's continue here. Then, 
below this, let's target the form input in the form text area, which are going to receive here a color of uh, white with a 55%. Outline will be none here. Border will be none as well. Resize will be none. Border bottom is one pixel, so it's 777. Padding will be 0 0.25 on all sides and height of 30 pixel. Then I want to style here the input boxes. So here form and the input box inside them. So with a 100% color is FFF, display of flex, justify content of space between and align items of center. So let me see right now how they're looking, of course, but why is this not centered? We're going to see just in a second. I want to finish the stylings. Then form button is going to be here a width of 30%. Background color is going to be 17176E. Border is one pixel solid FFF. Color is FFF. Border radius is 0 pixel. Padding is 0 0.4 on top and bottom and 1 on left and right. Then margin top is 1.5 am. Cursor is pointer. And here font size of 17 pixel. And let's see right now how it's looking nice, but I wonder why it's not centered. So let me see here. Is it because the container is not having the height and width? Wait, it is having it. Ah, here it is because a normal style, but not a CSS module here. So, so write it like this. So right now it is going to be centered. Nice, nice, nice. And here I see that the button is missing. So let me go back here and let's write a button here. So below the last input box here, we have a button with a type of submit and the text is just sent here. So we have written, I think here, the CSS stylings. So right now you see how the button is looking like, okay. And here I want to add one bonus thing here. So for, for notifying the user if he has sent the email. So here is sent, set is sent, is equal to use state and the initial value is false. And here, if that is true, set is sent is true, and we are going to revert it back to false after, just let me write it, come on, so after two and a half seconds is going to be back to false. So here, set is sent is going to be false here. And here, below the button, we're going to have if is sent is true here. So with double ampersand, if it's true, we're going to have the following style. So here, classes dot is sent is sent message is going to have the text of email has been sent successfully and let me type just the CSS for this thing here so here is sent message is going to have a background color of red then color is going to be white position is going to be absolute the right is going to be 2.5 IRM top of 2.5 IRM padding of 0.75 IRM and border radius of eight pixel. So here we see that message undefined of line 53. So I what is undefined here? Is it this thing here? If I write it like this, would be undefined. If I copy it like this, I think it will get applied. So let's make that true. Just change the sound with the class name to this. Oh, and you see here, email has been sent successfully if it's a success but I'm going to revert it, of course, back to false. So right now, just let me close the CSS because we are ready. Let me try to send an email. So name is going to be, let's say, person one to person two email here. I'm going to write my own email here. And the message will be is, or just let's, write, let's type, how are you? And when I click send, what is going to happen here? If I console lock this template ID is invalid. To find this ID, we have a problem with a template ID. Let's see. Let me copy it again. And let me go here. Ah, here because I have type uh, I've pasted the service. So right now, if I paste again, whoops, I have not copied it again. Let me copy it. And right now, okay, right now I have pasted my template ID here. So right now it should work, right? So let me again clear the console and try to send. And right now you see email has been sent successfully and here, okay. So let me check my email. So my friends, as you see here, the email has been received. So everything is working as we wanted it to work. So please subscribe and thank you for your time. See you in the next video. Bye.